All right, what's going on, everyone? We are back playing some more Greater Maldrude in Thrawn's Revenge Imperial Civil War 2.2 preview. Uh, for those of you watching in the YouTube archives here, uh, this was recorded live, so the next episode or two will all have come from the same stream here. And uh, normally I stream on Saturdays at 2 p.m. EST if you've missed this one and you want to come to a future one. But I'm going to have the chat up there the whole time. I'm going to be taking questions from the chat, so if anyone currently there or there in the future has any questions about the mod or anything like that I will do my best to address them during the stream here I may miss a few minutes when I'm trying to focus on the monitor uh, that has the actual game on it because I have to turn my head slightly but uh, we're just gonna get right back into it so Starborn Michael Hall is asking are we going to see the Belter in this live stream at some point I would say that is very unlikely uh, it's been difficult to get out of even just the starting uh, the starting location right now. So the chances of getting from Kashyyyk over here to Kuat or even to Fondor to build the Bellator are just incredibly low. Uh, especially since I'm going to focus more on trying to take this little area over here. Uh, let's see. Will the Katana fleet event remain in place? Next update will be replaced by a different system. Also want to say how much... So, thanks Callum. Uh, the Katana fleet event is pretty much untouched. It's going to be staying in the same way. Uh, we have Emmer. I believe I actually said I wanted to go into Centauri's with this fleet. Yes, that... That makes sense. Yep, oh, crap. So I'm going to put these guys back on the planet here, because they should be there. And we do have enough credits now, so that should be over here somewhere. Oh right, they can get past there. Alright, we should be able to take that out if it's just the one Dominator. You could rush Kuat, but it would burn a supply. Uh, I don't even know if I could rush Kuat, because I have to get there with space and land units and take the planet, and have enough to take the planet, and Kuat, uh, especially if the Remnant has stayed sort of holed up there, they start with quite a bit after the Schism event. So, even if I gave up, like, the entire rest of our empire here, it'd be a bit of a stretch to get there. Well, the Bellator for, for the Greater Maldrude is only available at Kuat and Fondor. You can't just get it from any, from any shipyard. These are more subs. Uh, thanks. Hopefully, we're growing pretty fast, so hopefully at some point we'll be able to get up there a bit more, but... For now, I actually did just hit a thousand subs yesterday, so I want to thank all of you for supporting that, too. I want to do some sort of video uh, specifically about that at some point, but I've been up uploading so much lately, I don't want to completely flood everyone's stream, or not stream, but... uh. Sub subscription feed? What do you call it? I don't know. The thing with all the videos in it. I don't want to clutter that up too much for people. Enemy forces ahead. And I'm still trying to think of exactly what I should do for it. If I should be doing anything special or just like a quick, hey, thanks. But uh, part of the reason we've limited it to... Uh, to just cool out on Fondor for the Bowder for the Greater Maldrude is they're a faction. Oh, I'm just gonna have to switch something quickly here. It might freeze the stream for a second. Sorry about that. But one of the reasons that I wanted that we have it set for just cool out on Fondor is because we're trying to both capture some differences within the factions, even if they have some similar unit rosters. And for Maldrude, it was a more of a focus on smaller ships as opposed to larger ships so limiting their access to those is one way to do that and also uh, since you can't really do locking and unlocking of units based on the tech well you can unlock units based on tech level but you can't like do the era changes in the same way so we have to find different ways to make the warlords or extra factions uh, have some feeling of progression and part of that 
is just through uh, giving them reasons to go one way versus the other. It's sort of like what we did with the Penistar alignment in 2.1, where you had to take the corporate sector up here to get things like the... Uh, Construction complete. What's it called? The Lucre Hulk. New unit reveal, maybe? I'm trying to keep it separate... Uh, from just direct Thrawn's event stuff. So while I'm doing the playthroughs and all, all the preview stuff like that, uh, Corey loses and Thrawn's events are I'm trying to keep them fairly separate because uh, it's just not fair to the rest of the team if I just turn into like some platform of self-promotion through all their stuff as well. So I we're all fine with me giving like developer insights and all that sort of thing like this, but I don't want to turn it into a thing where it's like I'm exploiting them or something. It just it just feels kind of icky to me if I do that. Like I might do some developer logs and uh, like faction breakdowns and stuff, but just like using that sort of thing as a reward for the channel getting bigger, it, I just feel wrong doing that. Is the Bellator better than the Praetor? Yeah, the Bellator is... Uh, so the Praetor is like 4,800 meters. The Bellator is about 9,000, like 8,600 or something. So it's significantly bigger and it's just better in general. If you if you look at it like how they perform within their size class, the Praetor is more of a tanky ship and the Bellator we're using more as like a... In Sins, more of a fast attack platform. And in Empire at War, it's more firepower than it is defensive, but... It's still worse than like the executor or something overall. When can we see the Assertor? Uh, I've addressed that ship in particular quite a few times. We have no plans to do the Assertor. Will Era 3 IR include every Imperial unit from the Warlords or just maintain the normal unit list? Uh, the Era 3 Remnant unit list will be uh, still primarily centered on Dark Empire. It'll be pretty similar to what you had in 2.1 with one or two changes, but that'd even still be more centered on Dark Empire stuff as opposed to taking in Warlord stuff. Because a lot of the uh, a lot of the unique Warlord units, it might change starting units, but a lot of the unique Warlord units are like older Pen older Republic stuff or CIS stuff. And since the Dark Empire was like the height of the Imperial post Endor technological stuff until the Yuuzhan Vong War, it, there's not really a huge reason to build any older tech like that. Are you ever going to see some streams of doing actual modding? I've thought about doing like uh, some modeling on screen or on stream, maybe some working on other stuff. I know Gull and Bane have done a lot of uh, Star Trek Armada stuff on stream where they'll just have a bunch of the devs hanging out in a voice chat and working on stuff while they're streaming and I might do that at some point with some of the devs but uh, yeah if, if people are really interested in seeing that sort of thing I can definitely try to make that happen uh, I might be able to pull in like Robin and Slever and maybe Anthony but hey Chris uh, yeah, you're right there, Michael. Direct fire at their laser cannon. Hopefully you don't attack too much there. Target those lasers. Direct fire at their laser cannons. Because I do intend to do some of the... some more tutorial style things. Uh, I've just had so much other stuff that I've been recording lately that I've... that's ended up falling off a little bit more than I intended it to. Vehicle in production. But... Like, yeah, I definitely want to model something at some point, whether it's going to be something specifically for uh, Thrawn's Revenge or if I'll be doing something else with it. Because I've been playing Knights of the Old Republic for the channel and I came across that parked Sith Interceptor and I kind of want to model that, which would just be a model for its own sake and not necessarily a, a mod model. And ships like the Bellator and other more modern ships for the IR just during Era 3. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, they are getting some different things, like the Allegiance will be available to the Remnant. 
but that's just because of the remnant itself as opposed to the uh as opposed to the warlords though we do sort of have a rule as far as balancing where we try to keep the praetor and the allegiance away from each other unless they're shooting at each other so it's that's always kind of iffy especially with the build bar being so full in air 3 Alright, what are we actually dealing with here? I'm just going to do a quick run around in the Neutron Star since it's new. This is the latest model and skin that I've personally done. It was the first one I've done in a while, actually. Uh, I think the last thing I did before that was probably the Precursor. So I'm still trying to get back into practice. I'm relatively happy with how it came out, though, considering... It's got a sufficient amount of grime and stuff going on. I'm really not happy with the precursor though. I do need to... I'm not sure if it's the model or the skin, but I need to do some updating on that. And the Providence is also getting a bit of a rework too. The model is actually... Uh, really good for the province, it's just the skin that's so bad, because it was actually made in like 2007, I think. What changes are there to the New Republic? Uh, do they even really have anything here? Because I saw a bit pop in. Well, there's a lot of story stuff that the New Republic is getting, so there's that. But uh, you also have, as far as ships go, We've announced the Dauntless, we've shown. Uh, there's also the uh, the Empress Station, which we haven't shown or talked about, so I'm not going to say too much more about that yet. There's the Republic Star Destroyer that we're putting back in. I'm still not super happy with that design. We might revisit that in the future, but I'm not sure. But there's... Three or four new ships, at least. Like, three or no, four new entities of some form, whether it's ships, stations, whatever. And there's also... Like, a lot of the story events uh, will be going through them. So, there's a lot of new... Re if you've played a lot of the New Republic in the old version, there's still a lot of new reasons to go back and revisit them. Uh, especially in, like, the Back to War GC or some of the other new GCs. So you'll be getting, like, missions and stuff related to the story. Is the Neutron Star any better than other Dreadnought or Bulk Cruisers? Uh, the Neutron Star is essentially in a similar power level to the Assault Frigate and uh, the Dreadnought. It lacks some of the direct ship-to-ship -ship capabilities, and it has a bit more anti-fighter and uh, fighter support as well. So, it's probably not going to be able to take on a Dreadnought one-on-one, -on -one, but between the additional fighters it gets, it might be able to, like if you take those into account. And it's going to be less vulnerable to fighter attacks. Oh god. Well, this is going to be fun. Right, we have an IPV, or we have two IPVs, so that's going to be enough to take care of most of the things. They have three, four capital ships. That, I think we can do this. Uh, in Earth 3 to 5, will the Bellator be buildable for the Imperial Remnant and Allegiance and Praetor 2? Well, like I just said, the Allegiance and Praetor 2 we tend to keep away from each other, so it wouldn't be both if they get either, and I don't think they're going to get either. It's probably just going to be the Tector in that role for them. Uh, the Bellator they don't get. There are some other things we're doing with... Uh, like there'll be there's some stuff we're doing with the Bellator for the Remnant in Era Five, but I'm gonna wait on the Era Four and Five G C breakdowns being posted to talk about those. Uh will Bisc get a map change because whenever I attempt to take it from the AI it's just like seven turbo lasers. Uh that's not really anything to do with the map. There's something wrong with uh the build limit on the turbo lasers where sometimes that'll happen. Uh if any of you watch Captain Shaq's playthroughs 
uh, he recently came across the same bug. I don't think it was on BIS, but where, for whatever reason, the AI was able to build a at least a second set of Turbo Agents. I think it was on Orbantel. I can't remember exactly, but he... So it's a bug where you can kill it and then the battle won't end because the AI is able to build more turbo laser structure marker things and there's only one set for them to go in. And I'm trying to figure out what's making that happen. I'm going to do my best to stop it from happening, but it doesn't really have anything to do with the map. Uh, why doesn't the Maldrud have golems? Well, some of the Maldrud stuff is just not done yet, so they will have golems. Because keep in mind, a lot of the, all this stuff is still work in progress. So uh, there's stuff like build pads, capturable stuff that they don't have access to yet. And some of their space units aren't done yet. Some of their space structures aren't available yet. But that's all stuff that we'll be working on over the coming months. Especially with... Oh uh, well, yeah, I didn't mention this yet. But we will be doing a demo version for 2.2 with uh, this GC. So you can play as Zinj, Maldrud, or the New Republic. And it'll have a lot of the new units in it. Uh, it'll be a way for us to get some feedback on some of the features before we roll them out against across too much of the mod and sort of do some balancing, do some uh, get some just feedback on how a lot of the changes are going, if we're heading in the right direction with them, uh, how people feel about them. And uh, since we haven't really released anything for Imperial Civil War in three years, just uh, something to tide people over, because I think people think we're closer to release than we actually are, because there have been a lot of people asking, especially recently, whether we'd be doing a Christmas release. And, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, as far as voice lines, or voiceovers go, that is something that we are trying to work on. Uh, it's just, we're trying to write the scripts first. There are some community members who have started taking it upon themselves to do some recordings, but, uh, once we're able to, we're going to sit down, we're going to try to write the lines as much as we can before we get anyone actually working on, uh, officially recording them, because... It's a bit more difficult when uh, we've had issues in the past where we try to hire voice actors and then because we haven't written all the lines at once, trying to do it like in an ad hoc basis, it's harder to keep in touch with people and to keep them, even if they are still interested, trying to keep uh, everyone sorted. So we're essentially trying to get everything written as much as we can and then uh, we'll be able to record as much as we can. It won't all be done for 2.2. We're going to try to get as much as we can done for uh, starting with the units that are overlapping with Ascendancy, just because it's better that way. But then, like stuff like minor heroes, stuff like uh, standalone units, that'll ideally we'll get as much as we can done, or we'll get as much as we can done. Ideally, we'll have everything done. But so mods have triple agent turrets that actually rotate. Are there plans to do this in the near future, if at all, to be added to the mod? So, the reason we don't do that is primarily uh, performance related. So, that can be a significant drain on CPU, especially with ships that have a bunch of them. Like, you can see on the Allegiance, you have a bunch. You have, uh, on the Secular, these are all supposed to be turrets. On uh, the Bellator, like, especially the Bellator, you have like 40 of them that would have to rotate and that's just if you do the top ones that are visible but uh, so for us it's more of an issue of trying to keep the game having reasonable performance and like it's about system resource allocation so those system resources are things that because turrets are usually so small as well you're putting the majority of your CPU strain in stuff that you're not really going to be seeing as much and for us, it's more of a priority to, uh, rather than putting in that kind of detail to have the game running, it's, it's a trade-off regardless of what you choose to do. But it's the same sort of thing where you'll see a lot of mods, especially now, that use like incredibly high poly models, and I've always sort of disagreed with this because the game engine can't handle it as well. Uh, even I, I have a decent computer, and I still get a lot of slowdown when I try to play those, thi those kinds of mods, and quite frankly, a lot of them don't really use the poly budget that well. So, like, our highest poly model right now is the Redone Bellator by a significant amount, and that's like 20,000 polys. And there are some mods that'll do uh, like 20,000 molly, mollies? 20,000 polys for like a small cruiser. And it's and that's before even really properly us, utilizing 
like bump maps or anything like that or even making sure that the polys you are using are optimized and for us like we've been doing a lot of model reworks where we're trying to reduce poly counts and reduce system strain because uh, if there's always been stuff like the K-Wing and the Clawcraft that were higher poly and they cause a lot of significant str slowdown so we're trying to increase system performance for pretty much any PC we can and also decrease load times as well and from that perspective it's just we don't feel that it would be the best idea to do rotating turrets uh... Hold on, I was gonna have to scroll up the chat a little bit, I think. Okay, actually, I didn't miss any chat. So, Tartan Patrol Cruiser for the Rider Authority? Uh, no, we don't plan to use the Tartan Patrol Cruiser for anything, because there's, there's actually a lot of ships in that sort of size class or in that role that we can use, and a lot of them were more prominent in the EU than, uh, than the Tartan was, considering it was just made for EAW. I'm never really even a fan of it. It's just like a. It looks like they just modified their Carrick mesh, and that's even how it's coded. So I've never really been huge on it. And there's like seven or eight other ships we tend to that we can do in that role, and a few that we are doing in that role. Uh, how is the research for the New Republic going to work? So, and I apologize if, if I miss any messages because I'm speaking a lot, and some of them might be going up past the uh, up past the thing. So if I miss your question, I'm not ignoring you. Just if you have to, just re-ask it, and I'll try to make sure I get to it. But how's the research going to work for the New Republic? So essentially, you will have access to uh, whether we do it on certain planets or we, whether we make it require a structure, we're not sure yet. But you'll be able to essentially, uh, it'll be on your build bar. You'll see, uh, like, research the new class modernization project, and you'll sort of, you'll buy that. It'll work sort of like the Imperial tech upgrades and did in the base game, but it'll be for specific ships as opposed to upgrading your tech level. And uh, you'll be able to unlock those, and it'll be like a sort of parallel tech tree. Because the way it works in previous versions is we would have the some of the ships become available when they were finished, produ finished being produced. Finished being produced in uh, the EU. Whereas with the research, we're going to make it more when you can start researching them when those projects started happening in canon and then uh, you can just use them as soon as you're done and any following projects so for example the new class modernization project started but then got delayed so some of the ships uh, that's kind of a broad way to say it but some of the ships started being produced and then stopped being produced because of like Dark Empire and some other stuff but in the mod you'll have the option to start those research projects and then it'd be up to you if you feel it's worth the resources to put in at that time if something catastrophic happens, whether you want to do that or uh, or stop it and focus on producing ships you already have like they did in Ken. So uh, so for right now, you can research like the Viscount, any of the new class modernization ships. There's some of these options available for the Imperial Remnant and Empire of the Hand especially, but the Imperial Remnant didn't really develop that many new ships during this period, so it's less so for them. Uh, unfortunately, we can't really do something like that for the for the warlords because it requires some uh, some unlocking and locking of ships, which unfortunately they can't do because of just the limits of the engine. Any plans to bring the Zan Consortium units in the mod, especially for warlord factions? Remember something about the Kadalbi being mentioned? Initially, with Maldrid, we planned to have a few more of them, but it just felt icky. So for now. We're really just thinking about the Crusader being where it is as a Corvette for Maldrude. Whether we explore that any further with other stuff in the future is maybe. Uh, there's one thing we might that I sort of want to do for the next version, which I haven't even really discussed with the team yet, which may involve using one or two of their ships. But ultimately we felt we had enough other capital ships for the Greater Maldrude as it was that it wasn't really worth making a better model that could all be for them. Uh, can you give us a vague description of the Rider Authority and their units? I'm not going to go too much into the Rider Authority because we haven't done the news post for them yet and we're actually doing it pretty soon. But if the Pentastar alignment is sort of based around having 
the dregs of the Old Republic. Greater Maldrudin is built around having Crimson Command and pirates, and Zinj is like that mix of experimental Imperial technology uh, and stuff the Rebels had with the Imperial stuff. Then the Arido Authority is sort of the where all the shinier Imperial stuff went, so they're going to be more standard Imperial or like high tech Imperial. So I've always thought it makes no sense, but I've always thought of them as the cleaner Imperial stuff, even though that word means nothing in this context. That's just sort of how I thought about it. Uh, I was thinking more about lines of splicing movie, lines from the movies. Uh, yeah, where that's possible, we'll definitely start trying to do a bit of that, but it, that can still get into some weird legal issues. But just as a general rule, as far as lines go, that should cover it. Oh, on non... Oh, on capital planet for the factions, are there going to be capital buildings? We've thought about doing something like that, and there may be one or two places where something like that happens, but they have to sort of have a secondary function, and uh, that's where it's a bit more iffy. If you did, like, a, a Senate or, like, a Imperial Headquarters. We've thought about it for a few things, but we don't really have a solid idea of how we ultimately want to use it, so probably not for 2.2, maybe in the future. But yeah, there'll be like one thing like that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, what's the current significance of capital planets? What's different about them? Nothing really, I just like having Centauris. They're usually higher value planets, so there's that, but I just like Centauris, so I want it back. Uh, da, da, da. How is diplomacy going to work for, with all the factions? Uh, so the way the diplomacy system that Pox is working on work is you'd have... It's not like you're making deals with other factions. You can't really do that in the game. Uh, ultimately, what it was was you'd have a certain amount of influence in different planets and sectors. And if you lost all your influence, you'd lose the planet. But conversely, if you gained a lot of influence in the area, you could start recruiting planets over. We're probably going to actually have to cut that from 2.2, unfortunately, uh, because it's not quite finished. It doesn't quite do what we want it to do. And uh, Pox is going to be extremely busy with school for at least until the mod is released. And we don't want to just tack on things so we have the extra feature ticked on. We'd rather wait until it feels like it's adding more to the game and feels more complete. Uh, Want to just have one or two capital shipyard worlds for the Bellator for this let's play? Well, for the Bellator, it's considering the new model isn't even in ICW yet. Uh, it's something where I'm more concerned about showing off in the Penistar alignment playthrough when we get there. So it doesn't bother me too much yet if we don't get to showing off the Bellator in this specific playthrough. Are you removing any ships from the current version of the mod and the new one? Uh, that's a good question. I can't think of anything we've, we've cut. We may have done with one or two, but nothing is jumping to mind at the moment. I want to cut the Lucre Hulk. I really do. I know that's going to annoy some people, but I I really don't like the model. And I feel like the Invincible class would work a lot better in its place. Okay, what's on this planet? Five... Hmm. I'm going to get an IDT. I, don't, I can't get an IDT. What am I talking about? I should have just gone for it. Uh, I saw the Serenian class SD mentioned as a Meldrude unit. Do you guys have a model for it? Never seen designs or spec for it, even fan-made ones. Uh, I s well, we don't have it for we don't have a model for it yet. One of the things we're playing with doing f for it is uh, if you know what the Taj Tog, like Cassio Tog, his family, the Tog class battlecruiser is sort of that spiny thing. Uh, to me, it's always looked like something that could have served as an easy access to internal system for a testbed to things, which would make it fit with the EXF. The size fits. Uh, the fact that the Saranin is a ship class with a fair description of 
what its role was without any design and the TOG battlecruiser is a ship without a class name that fairly well fits what the Saranen was supposed to be. That's always seemed like a good opportunity for us. So I think that's probably what we're going to end up going with. If you want to just Google TOG class or TOG battlecruiser. And so that'll probably end up being what we go with. If not, we might just make something else up. But as it is, that's where we're going with it. Is the 2.2 demo going to include the smaller ground maps? Yes. So for the 2.2 demo, we're essentially trying to focus all our effort uh, within the team on getting this particular GC to as close to what it'll be in release state as we can. Uh, just so people have a good idea of what that is, and the smaller ground maps is certainly a big part of that. Uh, I can make a poll on it. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure I know how that poll would go, Revan. There's a... A lot of people have the attitude of, it exists, it must be in. So, I don't think anyone would vote to have a, a ship removed from the mod. <laughs> Unless I made a bunch of, I just like spoofed my IP a lot and just <laughs> rigged the vote. Not that I'd ever do that. Alright, you're going down. Can we get all these guys... Oh, their fighters are just gonna... Hey, where are you going? Where do you think you're going? Get over here. Uh, sorry this question gets asked a lot, but you have a rough estimate of release date for the update. None whatsoever. In, like, and I'm not just trying to be, like, coy or anything. We There's literally no way for us to know. The demo I'd like to have out in the next, like, month or two, but even that is, like, who knows? Maybe sooner, maybe later. Uh... Could you leave the Lucre Hulk in, as a, in the mod as a modder's piece? Well, the model will still be in the 2.1 version if people wanted to dig it out and mod it in themselves, but... We probably won't end up cutting it, because I don't like getting anthrax mailed to my house, so... I would... I wish we could just redo it. That would be nice, too. Uh, in ICW 2.1, why do I lose like 40 units if I auto-resolve ground battles? Is that going to be fixed? Well, part of the problem with auto-resolve there is it, it is very heavily weighted towards the AI to begin with. Uh, and the other thing you have to keep in mind with auto-resolve for ground is it's taking into account not just the units, but also the structures and the garrison units. So you're ultimately trying to kill a lot more than it looks like you're trying to kill. Oh yeah, I had a ton of ground units over here. God damn it. I mean, the Luke Rock isn't really a lore friendly unit for them. Since the. Since Raidu won't be a faction in the demo GC, we'll be able to play as Penistar and Raidu in Skirmish. I'd also vote to kill the Marauder Cruiser at all day. Uh, no, so. I don't know if we're going to even touch Skirmish for it, but you won't be able to do anything with a Raidu in it. Because we're trying to essentially just focus on getting all the things done for those two things and not worry about anything else yet. Or for the demo, and not worry about polishing the rest yet. So, and then also there's the idea that we want to like keep stuff for the final release to show off. So it's not like dumping everything on people at once and just having a crappier version of the final release. We want to give an idea of what the final release will be in a microcosm. And uh, putting in the less polished stuff is counterproductive for that. Yeah, I don't intend to do that, Michael. I'm more concerned about if the Bellator doesn't show up in this particular Let's Play, I'm okay with that. Because, again, the uh, 
the new model for it isn't in, it's in ICW, but it's not in, uh, it's not, or it's in Ascendancy, it's not in ICW yet. And first off, we want to show off the new model rather than the old one. And it'll definitely, if it doesn't show up here, it'll definitely show up in the Pentastar Land playthrough that I inevitably do. So it's, you're not really missing out, it's just a bit more of a wait. As long as I don't take out any of my actual ships there. Or my transports were good. The people asking for the Empire of the Hand SSD are usually just joking now. Occasionally get a new person who asks why they don't have one. But on the forums, 90% of the people are just... trolling me. Alright, can we finally invade Centaurus? Will we get back to how we started in this GC? We're on what? This will be like episode 15, and we've taken Contrum that we didn't have, we've taken these two Haven planets, or three, we've taken these two, we've taken these three. And I guess Antimeridius counts. So we made slightly more progress than I thought we did, but we need to invade before they come. Da, 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 da. Choose your reinforcements. Is the is the power generator over here? I think it is. Can you go on water? I think you can. Can't capture that, unfortunately. Alright. Oh wait, no, it's over here. I know things. It's not over there. A lot of stuff is over there. They don't even seem to have... Yeah, they don't have one. That's odd. Alright, let's try to not die. I'll have to check the coding for Zinj and see if they were missing it. Because they should have it. Right away, sir. Back oh, crap. IDTs. Oh, these are jump troopers. Yeah, this is, uh... This is of questionable winnability. It has. I'm gonna have to ask Lorne what the... because Lorne has a spreadsheet of all the maps, all the planets, and which planets have which maps. If you guys want to uh, hurry up and help. Did something get destroyed? Alright. We'll have to come back in and not waste the stuff. We have been defeated. Yeah. I'm going to pull in some other unit types. Because the IDTs are going to be a bit uh, problematic. Escort requested. Uh, where are we going to build them? Unit in production. I thought we had some. I probably wasted them because that's what I do. Thanos, we're still getting some capital ships out of there. Let's get a few of you guys and you guys. Because your bombers are good. You can't have your planet back. Stop trying. Who has the Z95 in this mod? Nobody. There is no Z95 in TR. Oh, 
mean, I think Mara might have it in... before she gets the Jade Shadow or whatever. But that's... not really a faction, that's a person. Alright. I think it was an acclimator. Was the other, was it a legion? No, that can't be an allegiance. The icon looks like this. Like the Praetor. Oh well. I I don't even remember who what it was that invaded us. That's going to go through... Okay, it's just two ISDs. ISD 1 and an ISD 2. At least they're being a bit more uh, diverse. Especially compared to uh, <laughs> the New Republic in the Zinch playthrough. With 97 Dominators. Will the New Republic be getting the Blue Diver? Uh, the Blue Diver was from like 20 or 30 years, 20 years after the, mo the mod ends. Because didn't it, uh, didn't it come in on like the Swarm War? I don't think it was in the Vong War, I think it was like right after the Vong War. Maybe right before the Swarm War, but either way. So that would be about 10 years after the mod. Don't tractor beam my stuff. Alright, if you came a bit closer, you might be able to hit them a little bit better there, guys. Come on. Don't be shy. Don't let our allies die because you're lazy. I still need to get all the damage particles onto the Allegiance. That's going to be tedious. Enemy has been defeated. Yeah, I'll try to use a few more Crimson Commands. You only get, uh, like 15 total. 